Do you pull up your pants with pliers? Do you have brown smudges on your face from slapping yourself on the forehead after realizing you forgot to use toilet paper? Do you believe that Augie only has partial mental defects? Then I have news for you, you're dummy. But don't despair, since dummies are in the majority and therefore are a respected demographic on YouTube. So this video is for you. So, what is a crop? Basically, a crop is when cheap bastards don't want to buy a full-frame body and buy a crop sensor camera instead. Then they realize that some full-frame photography lenses have a similar optical design as famous cinema lenses from the 80s and 90s, saving them even more money. And finally, the inner cheap bastard went full circle and bought a budget metal piece adapter, creating the crop. Before I continue, I will link two YouTubers in the description that have a very detailed scientific explanation for the crop factors. However, if you're lazy, and we all know you are, just watch this tutorial first. It's not very scientific, but it's very user practical. So one thing you have to understand when attaching a full frame lens to a crop sensor body, it's basically a shitty zoom. A zoom where you can only zoom to one focal length while not being able to zoom back out. A shit zoom. And why would I call it that? Because now you have reduced light as well. However, you can change that when you use a focal reducer instead, which turns the shit zoom to an almost full frame lens. The Metabones XL Speed Booster for Micro Four Thirds. It's relatively well made, however not weather sealed. It should be noted that the XL won't work on most Olympus bodies. So for Olympus cameras, you would have to buy the Ultra version with the 0.71 magnification. However, this speed booster has a 0.64 magnification. So you multiply the focal length and the f-stop times the crop factor and then multiply it by the magnification. For Canon EF mount lenses, you would have to get this version with its electronic contacts since that is the only way to adjust aperture on EF lenses. It's all done by aperture control through the camera. Now, some of you might say, I will buy a Canon F1 lens that is super bright. First of all, an F1 aperture is so shallow, you think it invented hypergamy. Bottom line is, the electronic aperture control has sometimes a hard time reading F1.2 and below. Now we come to the topic of speed booster sharpness wide open. From what I can tell, sharpness is primarily dependent on the lens. A sharp lens like the Otis will remain razor sharp with the speed booster. A lens like the planar wide open will not be as sharp. And I don't think I can blame that on the speed booster, since other people's planar full frame footage doesn't look any different. Basically, the speed booster is to crop camera users what antidepressants are for single pet owners in their 30s. A method to be content with your situation. Now, is it very difficult to attach the speed booster to a camera? Basically, it's like an asthmatic nerd's date with a rubber doll. You line up the parts and just twist. Except once it's all done, there's less shame for your parents. As for the EF lens, it's the same thing. You line up the red dots, insert and twist. And there you go. You now have an almost full frame setup. And what of the basic metal adapter? Not any different. You line up the red dot, insert and twist. The question arises, if you already own a very good zoom, is it worth adapting lenses from other systems if you don't need the extra light? That's a good question that every cheap bastard, every good budget filmmaker should ask themselves. I should mention I won't be actually using the Olympus Pro 40 to 150mm f2.8 zoom, since that is just a completely different zoom range. I mainly display it for dramatic effect, to entrance the more superficial viewers. The zoom that I will be using today is the 12 to 40mm Olympus Pro f2.8. This is Augie. He's what a New York model would look like after a horribly botched plastic surgery and an addiction to cheeseburgers instead of cocaine. You should be nice to me. I'm the reason why people watch this show. No, you're the reason why dating profiles now added the term eunuch. I never requested eunuch category. I wanted them to term schlong petit. Calling you a schlong petit is like Micro Four Thirds calling itself medium format platform. That is a very nerdy reference. You are a nerdy reference, you coagulating burger bun eating bastard. We start with the speed booster first. This is one of the most popular Zeiss photography lenses for video use. This Tagon 28mm f2, known for its three-dimensionality and is nicknamed Hollywood. I have set the aperture on full frame f4.5 to mimic the zooms Micro Four Thirds f2.8 once you calculate it with the crop after the speed booster. 
And now we're using the basic adapter. Aperture is set at f2.8 to match the zoom's f2.8 later. We're looking at a full frame f5 using the 1.8x crop factor. The first zoom shot is 18mm, which is a 32mm full frame equivalent. The Olympus does have a good look. Image quality wise, it can hold its own, just like Augie on lonely Saturday nights. However, he's so bad at even that, one time he heard a peeping tom booing. Now we match the Zeiss lens by zooming to 28mm. At full frame f5, it's obviously very sharp. Rendering looks also very good, unlike Augie's head. People don't know he also was an ugly kid with plenty of pimples. One day he fell asleep at the library. When he woke up, a blind man was reading his face. Here's a wider angle of all four shots. As you can see, the foreground and background matches. It remains relatively consistent, showing that the crop is practically a zoom in the real world. Now, if you look at the bokeh, and we will see that... Oh. <laughs> you try to show that a native zoom lens is an alternative to an adapted prime lens, but the bokeh in look is different. Now you just confused all those noobs. <laughs> Shut up, Augie, you lopsided-headed bridge troll. Sometimes to acquire skill, failures are unavoidable. The main principle still remains with crop versus zoom. And if people are confused, they can just memorize this crop chart when calculating their focals. So, it is now obvious that focal length and image feel has many variables. Different focal reducers, lens speeds and so on. Some of you might find this all very confusing. But always remember, there are a lot of us dummies that bought a crop sensor. And we are managing just fine.